Ladies and gentlemen, this is RPT Shorts. It's your boy Chingo Bling. New shit. And we got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? Came up with this concept, man. I love it. We're going to talk about everything pop culture, non-political. So right now, the name of the show is RPT Shorts. Mm -hmm. And we want to just spoil our listeners, man, the audience. The audience is a bad bitch. That's right. We want to spoil her. We want to just give y'all. Got to finesse her. Yeah, yeah. We got to just give y'all more. Caress. More. But when you least expect it, bam, new show. Bam, blow your wad. What? <laughs> bam, new, new wad for your timeline. <laughs> so first up on the list, uh, versus. All right. So are you familiar with the versus battles, the concept? I'm definitely familiar with the concept, yes. So basically, Swiss Beats and Timberland came up with this idea where they're going to put up two comparable artists and try to make like a boxing type hype moment for the culture, for the hip hop, right? Mm, okay. You know I'm hip hop still. I do, I do. I mean, some people think I'm QAnon, but I'm still hip hop. Don't get it twisted. So I've seen a few verses. I saw like the Key Sweat versus um, uh, Bobby Brown, you know, things like that. Is there like a, a quintessential, like that was the verses? Like, but I mean, you know what? I haven't seen all the verses. But so much, it was a moment. Right. So much content. Like, like us reacting to it, we're not, we ain't the only ones. Like, everybody and their mom are chiming in True. about what are your, so many moments. Um, now, mind you, I grew up in Houston. However, I went to high school in New Jersey for four years in the late 90s when all these type of artists started coming up so i used to listen to hot 97 and like when biggie was alive and all that so when tupac and biggie beef was happening all my friends were on the biggie side we were living over there we it was mm. like it was like a narrative it was very biased right when nobody like you had to it was almost like being a trump supporter <laughs> like being a tupac supporter out there like you had you were coming out the tupac closet oh, okay like you saying i kind of like Tupac. Yeah. And that's weird because here back home, it was more, I think, probably more Tupac than Biggie fans. But anyway, um, you had the Locks versus Dipset. I always enjoyed both. I always liked the songs of each group. But I would always lean more Dipset. I just, yeah. Really? Yes. Okay, so let me tell you real quick, just for context here, all the headlines that I read from this recent one was how the Locks killed it. Yeah, they did. Okay. No, they did. Just making sure. No, no, okay. no. I'm not saying the results of the of the bout. I'm saying that for you, prior prior to seeing them perform in this in this medium, right? Mm. I was a little bit more team Dipset. I liked. I love Jadakiss. I think lyrically, he was always one of my favorites. Styles P is dope with it. He's he's a mix between like the gangster and the and the lyrics. Sheik Luch, he's cool. He's alright. <laughs> he was just there. He's there. You know, Sheik roll the blunts. <laughs> you know, Sheik. Don't let nobody in our green room. You know what I mean? He was almost like that third wheel. Okay. But he was there. He was part of the group. All right? He was a member of the, of the family. Dipset, I really enjoyed because, you know, Cameron was just so flashy with the fashion. Like, he made pink cool. He had the pink cell phone, even. I think it was made by Baby Fat, Russell Simmons' wife. I, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know who else made a pink phone back then. But he had the pink mink, the pink everything. This dude was a Harlem cat lyrics his style was totally different like the way he would all his shit like the way he would put the bars together the lyrics like huge cameron fan and a quick antidote one time cameron and the dipset were in houston i happened to be in the same building at the same time i had my boots i had the drip cameron almost slipped on my drip <laughs> he uh he came out of um, a room I think they were doing a listening party like at a Dave and Buster's type, like a pool hall type of place. And uh, he was sitting there having a convo. But the whole time he was eyeing my drip. He was just staring at my botas. And you'd never met, never seen him I or talked to him? I had never met him. But he, he was just, you know, he was just probably, I don't know what he was thinking. He's probably like, look at this fucking idiot. <laughs> but many rappers had, had given me props on my boots throughout the years. Anyway, that being said, I finally sit down to consume bits and pieces of this two-hour event, right? As I'm trying to skim through it, I'm just like, oh my God, it's so unorganized. There's so much hooting and hollering. Yes. So many people on stage. The microphones don't sound clear. Mm -hmm. And then I stumbled across a point in time where Jada Kiss finally is just like, because remember, I'm skimming, right? Yeah. At this point, I hadn't just watched it from the beginning. It was the point in time 
where Jadakiss went into his freestyle where he's like, you're a D, he's a P, y'all neighbors. And like the beat cuts out, DJ brings it back and it was a freestyle. It was like a recorded freestyle and the energy shifted. The crowd is like, oh, it's getting interesting. It's getting entertaining because a lot of the young people didn't know that was a previously recorded freestyle and it just brought a different element. It's like they had strategy. They were like baiting them. Mm -hmm. They were hit, hitting them from an angle that maybe they weren't expecting. They're like, oh, wait, we could do mixtape joints too. So at this point, I'm like, oh, my God. And then Jadakiss starts to say, they're rapping over the words. Y'all could have stayed in the car for that. Listen to Apple Music. This is hip hop. We're for the craft. We're for the culture. We're, it's us and the beat. Let's go. Boom, boom. And I'm like, oh, I'm being persuaded. Power of persuasion. They're using contrast. Look at what they're doing. Look, we're not here to jip y'all. And he's like, the fight's been fixed. They're rapping over the words. So I'm like, oh, false narrative. <laughs> I like it. Controversy. Yes. And now I'm just a fan. Mind you, for the past, I don't know, year, I've been really just consumed by politics and just like, stressing over like people aren't waking up they're gonna put passports it's like segregation it's jim crow all over again look at new york look at you know i'm I, i've been on this high blood pressure thing right i get to be a fan again i kind of fell out of love with hip-hop you know all the new stuff the mumbo and the mumbo jumbo and all these new rappers are promoting big pharma they promoting pills and they're junkies and i'm like Whoa, what part of the game is that? So now I'm just all in. I'm like, oh my God. It's like that time I was spending like going to showing it, just showing it to Joseph. Joseph, have you heard of the locks? You yeah. Know? Hey man, you heard of verses? Like now that time is probably energy I would have been listening to Steve Bannon or somebody <laughs> stressing over Afghanistan and how many Humvees did they take of ours? This is taxpayer dollar. They treating the taxpayer like a chump. You know, uh, Biden only been in seven months. He's shitting the bed. Now I'm able to be like, yo, this is music. This is hip hop. This is culture. And I was very impressed with the locks. I was like, oh my God. Jadakiss and the Locks are taking advantage of this moment. Their streams are going to go up. The tour sales are going to be crazy. Uh, he's really going to earn his place as like top five dead or alive, shit that he would always say. And I'm like, oh, my respect level went up. My respect level went up. I'm like, this dude's an MC. He's controlling the crowd. He's a performer. Um, they prepared. They were, they were super prepared. They were in harmony. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for somebody that probably wasn't too familiar with him, you realize, you notice. Oh, like, dude, immediately. Like, I, 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 when I said I skimmed through it, I actually slowly skimmed through it. Like, I went through a lot of it. I watched a lot of it actually this morning, uh, Guilty. Mm -hmm. But um, that was the first thing I noticed. Like, as you would skim from maybe song to song or, or whatever, or even the transition in between where they were like talking shit, mm -hmm. it was still better and like thought out better. At least it seemed like almost like they had rehearsed everything that was yeah. going on. Yeah, it, I think it was just their night. It was just like serendipity or something, but like it all fell in place. Dipset could have been more prepared. They kind of got off guard. It, Dipset started to look more like three solo artists that were more of a crew and who's, not a harmonious Who's group. from where? Dipset's New York? Dipset is Harlem. Right. And the other guys are from Yonkers. So oh. it's like up up north okay, like okay. boonies you know okay type of thing because when they kicked it off uh y'all ain't even from new york you're from miami he's like cam you live in miami yeah. tech let's go and i was like <gasps> that right away i was like damn i was like he he kind of dissed him got him like you don't even live here anymore because the i guess not the joke in new york where it's kind of like the radio stations and the DJs, they're going to shout out the boroughs yeah. and they'll skip over yonkers even though they've contributed a lot to new york music you know mary j blige and things like that but um the fact that they got to go first you know they set the tone it was just a sight to be seen i mean i just have a greater appreciation of jada kiss and the locks um it's the j-a-d-a -A. i got beef with the feds in the d-a i was like oh shit and then one of my favorite rhymes of his is like uh, I forget the setup line, but the, the punchline is, because like Sam, I could sell. Remember Sam Cassell? Yep, yep. I was like, God damn. 
Um, and you had brought up Jadakiss a while back. I don't remember when or why. Yeah, it was, it was on like on Chingo Chat, I think. Yeah, I don't even remember when or why, but he's always been nice with it. Dude, they baited Dipset into thinking... Um, the, 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 they set them up by forcing their hand for them to be like, oh, y'all ain't got no songs for the chicks. Y'all ain't got no chick records. Y'all don't, want, y'all don't like the women. I'm starting to think y'all don't like women. And then they're like, DJ, hit them with the medley. Boom, song with J-Lo. Boom, song with Mariah. Boom, uh, song produced by Pharrell. Boom, it's just boom. And, and they had more. There were more that I even forgot about that they didn't even have to do. And it was like, oh, there were so many memes. There was a meme of uh, Joel Santana, his face. <laughs> and it's like, oh, they do have songs for the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm, I'm just consuming it. I'm going back. I, I went to li- last night. I'm sitting there with the baby. I'm burping the baby. And I'm watching. I'm like, I never got to see the outro. How did it end? Who ended with what song? Y me dio cosa, we me dio cosita. Did you see the ending? Oh, it was great. Well, did you see when Cameron kind of choked up there? Yep. He was trying to freestyle. He reminded me of when I was at uh, House of Blues. <laughs> and I had to choke one time. Because um, it's the, cause my, my, um, I had a band and everything. And my DJ, the CD that I burned that I left home. I was living in Pearland at the time. It wasn't playing. So I'm literally up there with my band. And they're like, we rehearsed to play over the songs. And the CD's not playing. And what's the guide how we doing this it's like we didn't rehearse properly i guess so i'm up there choking and i felt i felt cameron and Cam, like i said cameron's one of my favorites because he has so much style like pizzazz mm-hmm. if you know swag and all that drip before drip was work there you go but uh anyway and i was like damn man, your course i'm like damn he's up there trying to freestyle and it's not working and you just see and i think they even started booing and i was like oh no but it ended with unity. It ended with peace. It's great to see artists who stuck to their guns throughout the years, never really getting their full credit, never getting the full due. There's always a lot of variables. And to finally get their flowers, you know what I mean? Like when they're still kind of young, still able to do their thing. It's not like, oh, 70 year old's finally getting his props. <laughs> um, so many moments. So many moments. Let me see. They had, um, they would do medleys. They had like, like chunks, like segments, like set up. They'd bait them. They did the the chick record segment. They did the, a lot of freestyles. Um, and then they were trying to pick on Sheik Luch, like, when you gonna rap? And then yeah. boom, he came out with some shit. We're like, damn, I forgot he was even on that. <laughs> and I mean, they hit him with the Benjamins. They hit him with the I get high, I get high. I get and the way they set up the songs, like before that song came on, uh, I get high by Styles P. It was like some some some. You just see him go front center, good stage presence. Lights the Dutch. I get high, I get high, I get high. On it. And then for the second verse, the DJ flipped the beat to um, I got five. And he's still rapping his shit. And I'm like, oh, damn, they killing these boys. I forgot what the setup was to Ballin. That was a good one, too. Yeah, but that was Jim Jones. So it was like, okay, he had his little hit. But then they came back. I forget what they what the locks followed up with. It's like they always had a rebuttal, like Mayweather. It was mm-hmm. like, it was like, big, big. You yeah. know what I mean? On some Canelo shit. Uh, it was epic if you have not seen it. There's a lot to consume there. Uh, not only is it a super long battle, they need to make an edit where it's just the locks. Yeah, for sure. Just I need to see the locks version yep. so that the youngsters coming up in the game, I don't give a damn if you're a comedian, if you're a uh, spoken word poet, if you're an acoustic solo artist. Just look at the preparation. Look at what must have gone into that behind the scenes, like under pressure, you know, stay focused battle mode they had my, michael buffer up there that was cool ladies that and was cool. gentlemen i mean the it just showed the importance of preparation the importance of a good dj it's like your dj is your drummer in a way like y'all have to be in rhythm um the details bro they weren't rapping over the words which is something i've been guilty of yeah <laughs> sorry um you could tell it was like a wave file not an mp3 like the sound quality was even different 
it's just so much, man. It was just it was a it was a point in time. It was a piece of history where where we can enjoy this again. They definitely made a moment. I yeah. will say that because sometimes that that word gets thrown around a lot. Where it's like, oh, that was a moment for the culture and this and that. It's like, no, this was a moment because people were talking about it. It re was revived yeah their careers reinvigorated it a bit reinvigorated better word not revived because that implies she's dead <laughs> thank you thank you rob okay. it was like some trt there you for go. the career and um especially jadakiss it's like because he was the mvp because he led the way it's like his stock went up definitely did nice. definitely did i was glad to hear your take on this you were excited yeah. to talk about this for a week yeah i mean his streams went up it's just, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm old. Maybe because I'll turn 42 in a week that it hits home. It, it hit, man. It's like, this is my era, bro. Really inspiring. And like, I think I got jaded with the music industry and hip hop and everything to where, why do y'all think I experimented with so many different genres and sounds and styles? Like some arguably corny shit, some cheesy shit. You know, I saw your photos on Face. I found my way to your place. Estás con otro way. Like, that's cheesy as a motherfucker. Some people enjoy it. It's, it's silly. But it made me want to get my pen and my pad out again. Interesting. I was like, ooh, I want to rap. I like it. I was like, Where's, give me a beat. Even though I'm doing a little country and shit right now. But I was like, give me some goddamn. Mix it both. I could show y'all. Yeah. Let me show y'all some goddamn bars. You got the guitar. You got the bars. You got the bars. It's definitely got the bars. And you got the guitar. And the bars are still there. They are. The guitar next to the bars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reinvigorated. I like it, man. This is, this is a really good RPT short. Yeah, for sure. So, yo, let me know what you think about the Locks versus Dipset. Are you Team Cameron? Are you Team Jadakiss? What's your favorite Locks song? And you know what? Props to Swiss Beats and Timberland for uh, exploiting people and uh, selling this shit to the white man, Apple Music. Um, <laughs> I think they did an exclusive on IG Live for some other battles or whatever. But, but no, seriously, um, I, just, I just appreciate being alive at this moment. Like yeah. just, just, you got to you know, find the silver lining, the good parts of the yeah, bad. Yeah, it just tied it all together. It's like, man, this is my childhood, you know, from the 90s, and, and, and these dudes are still at it, and, and it was great. Let us know in the comments what you think. Am I tripping? Did Dipset win? I don't think anybody said Dipset won. Nobody. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, nobody. Nobody. It was just, it was, yeah. But hey, let us know what your favorite Dipset song, your favorite Lock song, and what else we should cover right here on RPT Shorts. Sass.